My name is John Sennett. I'm an infectious disease doctor. I'm also chairman of the Department of Internal Medicine at the University of South Florida. I'm working now on a YouTube channel that will help convey very much the truth and as much as we can understand about scientific advances as we fight this true COVID pandemic. This week, the past few weeks, are actually an inflection point. Things are about to change. Children five and up can be vaccinated. And now for the first time, we have medications that truly affect the course of the disease. The first one, fluvoxamine, an antidepressant introduced to the United States in 1994. It's an SSRI similar to Paxil, drugs of that nature. It decreases the risk of hospitalization and death by 30%. The cost is about $4 for a course of therapy. This is a very important advance, especially for developing countries. Now, when we look at this, how does this work? Well, before I get to that, let's talk about the side effects. If I were to take you today and start you in this medicine, 5% would get headaches, 5% would have trouble sleeping, and 5% would have some nausea or abdominal discomfort. So the side effects are not significant. What is of concern is that this interacts with many other pharmacologic agents, including some antihistamines, many drugs that affect the central nervous system, and also an antibiotic called linezolid, and finally, an antispasmodic, elocitron. Now, I am not here to give medical advice. This is not medical advice. These are scientific observations I have brought to you. You should discuss them with your doctor. I'm just giving you background on what these products are. I'm not advocating or not advocating their use. I'm providing information. So let's look at this fluvoxamine, okay? Uh, the drug interactions we mentioned, the mechanism of action is really quite interesting. It seems to affect the lysosomes. The lysosomes are little intracellular packages filled with viruses that have to fuse with the cell membrane. And this interferes with the packaging and transport. That's important because it's a much different mechanism of action than these two agents, than Molnupiravir and Paxlovid. Next. Now, Molnupiravir, Merck's new product, is truly a wonder drug in many ways. It's 50% effective at reducing hospitalization and death. It's an analog of cytosine. Cytosine is a molecular building block for nucleic acids. It introduces what we call an error catastrophe. Once you try to plug that in, it breaks open inside part of the cell and viral replication stops. The side effects thus far, and again, we're using medicine not by peer-reviewed study, but by press release, it seems to have almost no side effects. And we really wouldn't expect an agent like that to have side effects. One caveat would be that anything that works on RNA and DNA, we need to be careful that it works, doesn't also work on human cells as well. We'll have to see, we think not. Finally, the drug interactions are negligible. This does not interfere that we know of with other drugs. Finally, Paxlovid, a product of Pfizer, it's 90% effective at preventing hospitalization and death. It interferes with a protease. Now, Molnupiravir interferes at the very beginning when the RNA is being put together. On the other hand, a protease has to snip the RNA 
to fit it into the virus. This inactivates that protease and you can't put that much RNA in a virus. So the virus is not reproduced. It's combined with an anti-HIV drug, ritonavir, which has side effects that are basically GI, some nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, uh, and some occasionally, rarely I might add, skin rashes. The drug interactions are present with this drug. Uh, cardiac antiarrhythmics, ergot alkaloids for migraines, benzodiazepines for sleep and anxiety will all have their effects enhanced. So you want to use these with caution and only on the advice of a learned physician experienced with this product. I think when you look at what these are doing, we're raised a couple interesting questions. Number one, these are amazingly active because these patients are not vaccinated. If they're vaccinated, these could be much more effective. Secondly, one has to speculate what would happen if you started mixing them so that you're disrupting formation of the RNA chain and disrupting the final packaging. Or suppose you throw this in and you disrupt lysosomal fusion. So this whole new world just in the past few weeks, a tribute to American science, a tribute to scientists the world over, they're dealing with what is truly an existential threat. People minimize this. They think there's going to be an answer. We have some answers, but no one can tell the future. I've asked a medical student, Dr. Abba Milani, to sort of give me a perspective on how someone of that age and perspective would, would envision something of this nature. Thank you very much, and I appreciate you tuning in to our channel. Have a good day. Hi, my name is Alam Lani. I'm a medical student. I wanted to talk to you about what I think is the most important tool in winning the war against COVID-19, vaccinations. The FDA recently approved the use of COVID-19 vaccinations in children ages five and up. Vaccinating the youngest members of our community will stop the spread of this vicious disease. Please do not confuse this with the drug ivermectin. This is a weapon of mass distraction. On the other hand, these three new treatments, fluvoxamine, monopilavir, and paxlovid, have the possibility to change the course of the pandemic. As we're facing a global disease, it's vital to consider how these drugs will be distributed to low-income countries around the world. Fluvoxamine, an antidepressant, is already available, and it's only $4 a course. Uh, fortunately, Merck and Pfizer, the products, the companies um, responsible for these two products, are committed to distributing their products globally. Merck's products, Monopilavir, is available to com companies around the world at a tier-based pricing system based on each country's ability to pay. Merck also has permitted access to generic manufacturers and the medicine's patent pool to produce generic monopilavir and make it available to middle and low income countries. Similarly, Pfizer and their product Paxlovid has signed an agreement with the MPP to also produce their pro uh, product in a generic form and um, distribute it to 95 middle and low income countries, which will make up 53% of the world's population. So these three new treatments will change the course of the pandemic. So with that said, I hope that you will join us back on our new YouTube channel and follow for more educational videos on COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. Thank you, bye.